morning we're going to be looking at Galatians uh, chapter 6 this morning. Galatians chapter 6. And as we look at this this morning, we're in the second part of our series, Got to Stay Connected. Got to Stay Connected. You know, sometimes, no matter who you are, from a spiritual standpoint, and we all go through this, let's face it, sometimes we just don't feel connected to God. Sometimes we just don't feel connected to people. Sometimes we, we get down in the valley, we get down in the dumps and all like that. And you know, speaking of connections, I was heard a story not too long ago about a lady who had passed away and they were having her funeral in church. And when they brought the casket in, they brought it from the doors, like back there in the back, and they brought her in, and they brought her up front. And her and her husband were married for some 30 years. Well, as they was leaving, they was leaving out the same door, and the pallbearers, after the, the funeral services was over, the, the pallbearers got the coffin, and they were leaving it, going to the back, and all of a sudden, right at the last minute, when they was heading out the door, it hit the corner. The casket hit the corner of the building. And all of a sudden they heard something groan or moan. And kind of find out she was alive. And they opened up the casket and everybody in hysterics and all like this. And this lady lived for another ten years. Her and her husband was married another ten years. And then she died. When they died, basically, everybody that attended that, quote, first funeral, attended the second one. And as they were leaving, and the funeral service was over, and this is, like I said, ten years later, they were walking out the back, then all of a sudden, the husband stood up and hollered at the pallbearers and said, Hey, 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 watch the corners! <laughs> For those of you who didn't catch that, just go home and think about it. You'll laugh later, okay? <laughs> All right. We're going to look, uh, to begin with, at, uh, we're going to look at Galatians, and uh, there is the scriptures on your handouts, too, or if you want to turn your Bible. But let's all stand for the reading of God's Word. We're going to look at Galatians chapter 5 this morning. Galatians chapter 5. And we're going to begin reading with verse 22. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. And it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Verse 24. And they, and they that uh, are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affliction, affections of, and lust. And if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Chapter 6 of Galatians, verse 9 and 10. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due seasons we shall reap. We, if we faint, the word faint means here grow weary, not. As we therefore, or as we have therefore opportunities, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them, are in the household of faith. The household of faith actually represents the local visible church here. Let's make our good confessions. Either have your handouts or your Bible in there and repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I'm about to receive the indestructible, incorruptible, ever living seed of the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert, my heart is hungry, my heart is receptive. Speak, Lord, thy servant here. I'll never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much. You know, the desire today is for the majority of the people to want to fit in, to want to be connected, to want to be part of a group. Even it starts off with young children as they attend school. 
And during that year, they want to belong to somebody. They want to belong to a certain group. And then as they become teenagers, they become youth, all of a sudden they, they become, sometimes they want to be part of this certain group also. Adults in the workforce are no different. They want to fit in with their co-workers. Church members want to fit in with other church members. But what happens when these people, from children up to the adulthood, when they don't fit in? When they don't feel connected? What happens when they don't feel part of something? They feel left out. They feel left over. You know, it's like we talked about last week, how sometimes that we just don't feel connected to God. How can we stay connected to God? Let me say this morning, I want you to keep two letters in your mind. The first letter is I, and the second letter is A. Okay, if you would, keep these two letters in mind. I stands for your identity. I is how you're wired. You know, God didn't make us assembly line products. He made each one of us special, custom made. Who we are, we're different from one another. We have God in common, but we're different. We have different likes and different dislikes. We, we're, we're different. Your, your talents are different from my talents. I mean, and, you know, some people are just wired, or we're wired different, and that's okay. That's not a bad thing. But it's our identity. It's who we truly are. But then you've got the letter A, which is adapted. It's kind of like how you adapt in the environment that you're at. Okay? Your adapted life. It, it's how you change in the environment around, around you. Let me, let me kind of give you an example. Let's just say that you are on the police force. And your identity, you're really a passive, compassionate, very nice, tender-hearted person. However, you're on the police force. And one day as you are uh, running your route, doing what you're supposed to be doing and all like this, you notice somebody comes by and they are speeding. And they're doing 80 miles an hour in a 45 mile zone. And, and all of a sudden you pull them over and you notice that it's somebody you know. In fact, it's not just somebody. It's your pastor. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you, you think for a minute, hey, you know, this is my pastor, this is brother mine. I mean, maybe I just need to hint to him to, to slow down, you know, be careful because 80 miles an hour is a little excessive and it's not an emergency here and, and you don't need to be doing that. However, on the other hand, my adaptive stage tells me I need to do the right thing and write him the ticket. Because he's no different from anybody else. He broke the law and he deserves the ticket, and that's the right thing to do. So my identity is kind of a compassion, tender-hearted, passive person. But my adaptive means I, I need to do the right thing for what's best. Right. Now, before we go any further, let me say, Brother Frank did not give me a ticket. I wasn't doing 80 miles an hour. Okay? <laughs> so some of you probably say, oh, I know what he's hitting at. He's trying to... No, no, no. no. Okay. But yes, I've had my share of tickets and they've been my fault. Okay, But no, th th I'm, I'm good now. Okay? <laughs> All is good. Now... I had to get out of the way. Sometimes in life, people will adapt themselves for the worst. They, they come plugged in or connected to some kind of environment and you would have never guessed they would have ended up like that. Some of you have seen people that have been excellent students in school or excellent workers and just good people, even good Christian people. And all of a sudden they get a wrong around a wrong get around the wrong environment, or maybe they get around the wrong crowd, whatever it may be, and they cave in or fold in to peer pressure, and all of a sudden they become hooked on meth or all sorts of drugs or something like that. Or maybe they rob a bank and something, like that. and you think back and you say, gosh, that's not them though. Yes, they did it, but that's just not them. That's not their identity. And sometimes people adapt their styles to, to the environment and sometimes it's not always good. The Bible teaches us that we are born sinners. 
No matter who you and I are, we're born sinners by nature. Now, sin comes from our bloodline. You have no choice. You and I are born sinners. It, it doesn't make a difference whether we want to be or, or don't want to be. We are, according to the Word of God. We are sinners. And, and if we was to be honest with one another, we would have to say that sin is fun. In fact, the Bible even teaches us that sin is fun, but only for a season. The Bible even teaches us that, that even though uh, uh, sin may seem fun for a season, it will take you further than you want to go. You know, at the same time, the Bible teaches us in 2 Corinthians 5.17... That when a person is born again, it says, Therefore, if any man, any person be in Christ, they're a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. You see, when a person becomes born again, they are a they develop an adapted lifestyle. And that adapted lifestyle, that new creature, they have new vision, new goals, they, they have a new mindset. But there's one problem. I still am who I am. I, I have this identity. I have this sinful nature called the flesh. But I have this adapted nature called the spirit, and they don't get along. It's always the spirit of wanting to follow God, but yet sometimes my identity and who I really am, I don't want to follow God. I want to do what I want to do, not what God wants me to do. And these two are in constant battle at all times. The adapted lifestyle is led by the Spirit. The, the, the flesh or the identity is led by the flesh. God leads me through my Spirit, but my flesh and my identity is led by the flesh. So, even though I'm part of the family of God, sometimes when I follow, well, when I follow the flesh, I don't feel plugged in. I don't feel connected. I feel empty. I feel frustrated. I feel stressed out. Now, let me say this. The Bible uses terminology to describe a person that is saved. One of them is born again. The other is adopted in the family of God. Now, let me real quick like explain to you why this is. You become part of a family one or two ways. One, you're born into that family. Right. Two, you can be adopted in that family. Now, under the law back there in Bible days, under the Roman uh, Bible days, a person that was born into the family could be kicked out of that family and, and, and be disowned. Now, even though they, they were kicked out of that family, it doesn't make no difference. That's still their mom and dad and still their blood relatives. But they could be kicked out of that family. They could say, I disowned that person. However, if a person was adopted in that family back then, they stayed in that family. You could not get rid of them. So the Bible says, not only when you're born again, you're born in the family of God, but just to make sure you understand, you're also adopted in the family of God. So we got to cover it. Now, I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. But if I am... Born in the family of God, adopted in the family of God, ever how you want to say it, I'm born again, I'm a believer. Why is it sometimes I feel like I'm not plugged in? Why is it sometimes I feel like I'm not connected? Why is it sometimes that, you know, anybody ever had a cell phone that goes low and you're searching for your charger? You ever felt like, I just need my charger. I just need to get closer to the Lord. So we're talking about staying connected. I've got to stay connected. So let's look at three things this morning, and you can follow along in your outline, about how we can stay connected. Number one, stay connected by taking the Word of God seriously. Number one, stay connected by taking the Word of God seriously. One of the comments that many people will have today is, you don't have to be a Christian or you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Well, let, let me just say this. What is a Christian? Christian means Christ's life. Why wouldn't a Christian want to go to church? Now, I understand there's 
physical ailments and health issues and stuff like that that can hinder you. I understand that. But what I'm saying, for, for the most part, for the norm, why wouldn't a Christian want to go to church? Okay. Well, naturally, hypocrites. Hypocrites. You know, well, what about the hypocrites? Well, my only comment about that, if you go back to the first church, Jesus had a hypocrite in His church called Judas. Judas was the treasurer. Judas was the money man. Judas was the unexpected one. Nobody would ever fear Judas would have backstabbed Jesus, but he did. If you look at the life of Peter, James, John, Paul, all these and all the other saints in the Bible, you will notice that they had people that were hypocritical around them. And if the truth be known, you and I are hypocritical sometimes. We, we don't like to say that, but we are sometimes. So we need to kind of do away with excuses, or we need to do away with excuses, and take the Word of God seriously and quit trying to justify what we want to do. In order to stay connected to God... You've got to understand that God is going to send people in your life. You've got to be connected with other people. If you ever notice, he says, love one another, uh, uh, help one another, uh, do this one another, one another. Well, I think there's over 58 times in the New Testament it talks about one another. In other words, be, be part of something. Be, you, you've got to have people in your life. Okay? You've got to have people in your life. Now, sometimes God will send people in your life that you're not fond of. You dislike them. I don't want to say hate, but you just wish they weren't around. Okay? Sometimes, sometimes God will send people in your life that will absolutely hinder you. That will drive you crazy. Anybody got people like that? Amen. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jumped on that. Now, if you don't believe that's biblical, read the book of Job. And find out his three friends and how... They really wasn't friends when it all said and done. Look at saints in the Bible. Look at Jesus in His earthly ministry for three and a half years. Well, what took place in His life? You've got to have people in your life. Now, people that hinder you sometimes, and we're going to talk more about that in a minute, but people that hinder you sometimes is not always a bad thing because it can make you a better and stronger person. Now, to prove my point about you needing a church family in your life, Jesus uses three different examples in the Bible. Metaphors, uh, examples, illustrations. One of the ones he uses is, and if you notice in your handouts, it's in 1 Corinthians 12 there. I'm not going to read that. But he uses the example of the human body. And he says, you know, the foot says, okay, I can't do what the hand does, so I guess I'm not part of the body. And the hand says, well, I can't do what the foot does, so I guess I'm not part of the body. And the ears say, well, you know what? I can't see like the eyes can, so I'm not part of the body. And the eyes say, well, you know what? I can't smell like the, the nose can, so I'm not part of the body. And it, it, but God says, all of them are part of the body. All of them have a different task. All of them have a different talent. But they're all part of the body. And he, and he explains that, how people are made up. The local church is made up of all different types of people with talents and gifts. Some are good at this, some are not. Others are good at this, others are not. And that's not a bad thing. But he speaks about different functions and different body parts. And he uses it in a metaphor or an example, just like the church. We need different people that are talented in, in different areas. And then he uses the example, if you notice in 1 Corinthians 3, in other places also, but he uses the example of a building. How you build a building. Now, there's no doubt when you build a building, you, you clear off the land, you, you pour the foundation, but if you don't build upon that foundation, what have you got? What good is it? You've got, you got to use that foundation and you've got to build upon it and you block by block, brick by brick. And that's what makes a difference in that building. You've got to start with the right foundation. And then you begin to build on it. And then he uses another example in John chapter 15. And it's a tree. It's a tree. And he talks about the vine and the branches and all like this. And he said they've got to stay connected. If you just go and cut the branch off or you cut the vine off, guess what? You don't have no fruit. Okay? And the Bible commands us to be fruit. 
be fruitful. Okay? Now I know you're thinking right now that some people are fruit loops. Some people are fruit cakes. Some people are tutti fruity, right? But the Bible commands us to be fruitful, to produce fruit. And, and here he uses three different metaphors, if you would, the human body, the building, and trees, or and all like that. Now, the reason why he uses this is he's trying to teach us that in order to to we, we need to be connected to other people. We need to be connected to God, but we also be need connected to other people. And if we're not connected and we're not producing fruit, and there's no fruit, we just wither away and we become frustrated, stressed out, burned out, tired, miserable, and all like this, and we don't have no joy in our life. You see, God never expects us to be a lone ranger. He knows that we need people in our lives. Just go back to the beginning of time. God created Adam and Eve. When they sent him to the Garden of Eden, he fixed the problem. When, when and eventually he sent his son to the cross. Why? So he could have fellowship with his people. Amen. So you've got to stay connected to God by taking but stay connected by taking the word of God seriously. You know. I know that the Bible is one of the most reverenced books that we have. People really respect it. People really reverence the Bible. And I understand that, and that's a good thing. But you've got to take time to use it. Whether it's 10, 15 minutes a day, whatever it takes, take some time every day and take the Word of God seriously. Don't let the Spirit lead you, not the flesh. Amen? Amen. Second thing, number two, <coughs> stay connected by trusting the wisdom of God's Spirit. Stay trusted, uh, stay connected by trusting the wisdom of God's Spirit. Now, this one's going to hurt. Okay? This one's going to hurt. If you would look at Galatians, it's on your handout there, in our text, verse 22, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Temperance means self-control. Against such there is no law. And they that are uh, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affection and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Okay. Now, when I look at these things, and I look at the fruit of the Spirit here, and this, this is one way to tell if you're connected to God. If these things are prevalent in your life, if these things show up in your life, these nine characteristics, these nine fruit of the Spirit, if they show up in your life, you're connected. You're connected. But when I look at these things, meekness, what does that mean? It means that you have the power, but you keep it under control. It's strength under control. Temperance, self-control. Long-suffering means patience. Okay? Patience. <coughs> patience. Anybody ever prayed for patience? Okay. Now, some people, especially Christians, they sit here and say, one of the biggest problems I have is I'm impatient. Okay, I, I just can't seem to deal with impatience. I'm just an impatient person. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm an impatient person. I want things done yesterday. Okay? I've been like that all my life. I blame my mother for it, but you know, that's the way it is. Okay? She was like it. Now, here's the problem with that. It's not going to change. Because God is going to say, until I can get you where I want you to, there's going to be more and more things that I'm going to put in your life. You know, if you, if you want to be patient, and, and you want to learn not to be impatient, guess what? You're going to have to go through trials and tribulation, and if you just refuse them and say, you know what, I'm just an impatient person, I'm accepting that's who I am, guess what? You're going to go through more trials and tribulations. You're going to go through some anyway, but you're going to go through more. Because what God says, and, and as we've mentioned before, God cannot use you until He breaks you. God's, God's got to get you to the point where you say, okay, Lord, I trust you. Lord, you know how it says in the Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not towards thy own understanding? That's exactly what it means. Don't trust your own judgment. Trust in God. Amen. Now, when you, when you look at this, and you look at these few things, and these nine qualities in the Bible, I look at them and I say, wow, it seems like that would, trying to be like that would create more stress in my life. You know, trying to, trying to do that, it seems like, you know, it just, it seems like it would take away, it seems like it would take away something from me. 
But God says the opposite. He said, if these are prevalent in your life, if these are show up in your life, you're going to have less stress. Now, I know what you're thinking. What about people that hurt me? What about, what about people that do things against me? Now, first of all, let me say, if you're thinking that, it's a very good question. But let me give you an answer. And I want you to hang on with me on this. You've got to understand that people that try to hurt you deep down inside are devastating to their own selves. They are so unhappy with themselves. They are so miserable with themselves. They, they are trying to make you miserable because deep down inside, they are a very miserable person. You ever heard the expression, misery loves company? Now, you don't hate people. The Bible teaches us acceptance. So you're, are you saying, I've got to accept people who do me wrong? Yes. Now, the Bible says, love your neighbor. Love thy neighbor and love your enemies. Okay, acceptance actually means to love. In other words, you've got to love them. Now watch this very carefully. You don't have to approve of them. There's people in your family, there's people in my family that we love because they're family, but we don't approve of what they do. Okay? Now, in God's family, there are people in God's family that He accepts, that He loves, but He doesn't approve of what they do. There are people in your family, your own immediate family or extended family, that are a disgrace to the family, but they're still family. There are people in God's family that are a disgrace to the family. He accepts them, He loves them, but He doesn't approve of them. Now let's get a little closer to home. I can't honestly sit here and tell you, or stand here and tell you, that God approves of everything I do. Just because He accepts me, because I... And even though I'm saved and I'm trusting Him as my Savior, I'm born again. I'm a new creature in Christ. God accepts me. He loves me. But He doesn't always approve of what I do. Now that's not an excuse to sin and, and, and all like that. But, but what I'm trying to say is He still loves me. And we have no right to hate others. We love them, but we don't have to approve of them. Now, understand this. God, now you've got to keep this in mind. God accepts me no matter what. But He doesn't always approve of what I do. Amen? Amen. Now, you've got to stay connected by trusting in the wisdom of God. Spirit. One of the problems you and I have is we allow others to get to us. We allow others to live rent-free in our mind. And what that does is distract us from serving God and loving God and trusting God like we need to. And God says just accept them, pray for them, love them, don't approve of what they're doing. You don't have to be walked over. You don't have to be a rug where somebody just steps on you. That's not what He's saying. But He's saying you pray for them, you love them, but you don't try to be like them. Amen? Amen. So number one, stay connected by taking the Word of God seriously. Number two, stay connected by trusting in the wisdom of God's Spirit. And then number three, stay connected by treasuring the workmanship of God's sanctuary. I don't mind telling you here this morning that this church right here is not in competition with any other church. We're not here to be something that we're not. We're not here just to be a meeting place or a social club. We are here for the primary reasons of worshiping together, to learning together, to grow together, to minister, which means to serve others, not ourselves, 
to, to, to make sure that we use our talents and gifts to benefit others, not ourselves, and to fulfill the task that God has in store for us. Amen. Now, we have this concept that church is a place that we go to. Church is a place I go to. That's not true. The local church is something you belong to. Amen. And there's a difference. We have the same we have the same concept that we believe Christianity is based upon a belief system. And that, that is true. I mean, I, I don't want to not say that Christianity ain't different from religion. Christianity is God reaching down to man. Religion is man reaching up to God. I'm not trying to earn God's favor. Most religions, or all religions, try to earn God's favor. They've got to do something to stay in high standards with God. God loves me and accepts me no matter what. It's Christianity reaching down to man, not man reaching up to God. Now, Christianity is not just a belief system. Now watch this. It's a belong system. You belong to a local church. You belong to other people. You are connected. And God knows how He says, love one another. Okay? Uh, uh, share one another. Do this, do that. One another, one another. Over and over again. Something about one another. What is He saying? Get connected. Get connected with others. You've got to have people in your life. If you want to be connected to God, the first way you, you, you do is you get connected to God, you learn about Him, you study Him, you take His Word seriously, you get to know Him better, you, and you begin to pray, and you become filled with joy that you know Him as your personal Savior, but then you're at the same time you're being connected to other people that feel the same way. Are they perfect? No. Do they make mistakes? I hope so. That way I wouldn't be by myself. <laughs> So you stay connected by treasuring the workmanship of God's sanctuary. Remember what he says, and it's not on your handout, in the book of Hebrews. Do not forsake the assemblies yourself together, as the manner of some have. Okay? This, this, this is not only a, 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 a Christianity, a belief system, but it's a belong system. Amen. We're together. We're connected. And if you want to stay plugged in with God... You've got to be plugged in with others. So number one, stay connected by taking the Word of God seriously. Okay? Don't, don't try to put your input and say, this is what I think. Well, the Bible says that, but this is what I believe. Just, just take it. Just take it for what it says. Stay connected by trusting in the wisdom of God's Spirit. I'll be the first to tell you, I don't like the part where it says, love your enemies. I don't like the part where it says turn the other cheek. But you know what? God knows what He's talking about. Okay? The thing about temperance, stay in self-control. Okay? And then stay connected by treasuring the workmanship of God's sanctuary. And it, it's great that when you can come to church and be around others. Because you've got people that are hurting. You've got people that are filled with joy. And we can share in that together. Let me ask you something this morning. Are you plugged in? Are you connected? Would you bow your heads, please? With every head bowed and every eye closed, we're going to have a song of invitation this morning. And as we have this song of invitation, it's exactly what it means. It's an invite. And maybe you're here this morning and you have never trusted Christ as your Savior. I didn't ask you if you're a church member. didn't ask you if you're baptized. Do you know Jesus as your Savior? Have you ever truly asked Him to come into your life and save you? Now, some people believe that I, I just intellectually believe in God. In other words, I believe there's a God. But that doesn't save you. It's a, it's a faith. It's, it's knowing that He's there without seeing. And if you've never done that this morning, I want to invite you to come. When we start singing this last song, if you'd like to come this morning, say, Brother Mike, I, I want to be saved. I want to be saved.
to be saved. I'll lead you in a simple prayer where you can accept Christ as your Savior. Maybe you're here this morning, and maybe you've been saved, but you've never been scripturally baptized. The Bible tells us that we should be baptized. Baptism doesn't seal salvation, but baptism is a pictorial ordinance. It, it illustrates, it's a metaphor of what Jesus, how He was buried and resurrected from the grave. And it, and it shows people that, that I'm a born-again believer. I'm a new creature in Christ. And maybe you're here this morning where you need to set a date to where you can be baptized. Maybe you're here this morning and this is where God's leading you. Maybe you're a member of another church or you don't have a church home and God's leading you here. And if this is where He wants you to, to worship and to serve. Why don't you come this morning? Brother Mike, this, this is where I'd like to, to come. This is where God's leading you. Maybe. Maybe you're here this morning. Maybe you're a member of this church. Maybe you're a member of another church. Maybe you just need some one-on-one -on -one time with God. Maybe you just want to come and kneel down at the altars, these front pews, and just... You don't have to say nothing to me. Maybe you just want to have some time with God in His house. If you feel led to do that this morning, you come. Whatever God leads you to do this morning, you do. Father, in the name of Jesus... We thank You. We praise You. And Lord, we lift You up this morning. And God, we're so grateful that we can be connected to the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the complete sovereign God. The, Lord, You are everything. Lord, You're not a God. You are God. And Lord, we thank You so much for Your Word. We thank You so much for, God, what it means to us. And Lord, we thank You so much that You love us despite our wickedness and our sinfulness. Lord, You loved us so much that You sent Your only begotten Son, one of a kind, to the cross for us. Lord, You love us so much that You're willing to forgive us of our sins. And Lord, again, we thank You and we praise You. And Lord, whatever needs to be here done this morning, I pray, starting with me first, that self will be moved to the side. And God will follow the precious leadership of Your Holy Spirit. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.